All right. So we are live. Uh, welcome, everyone, to another session of Parker Office Hours. First of all, uh, let me remind you that uh, Parker Code of Conduct applies. But the gist of it, just be nice to each other. Today, we have a couple of agenda items. And we're going to talk about label value completion. And we will get an update on column, columnar store. And I will be talking about the upcoming features about uh, symbolize, symbolize, symbolizing uh, some new binary features. So uh, does anyone wants to take it over for its agenda item or shall I go first? How do you feel about it? I can go first. Go ahead. Nice. Um, yeah, so I just quickly wanted to do a show on the latest update to the um, Parker UI. And um, basically, we now have like a proper label value auto completion for when you're trying to like filter profiles. So I can quickly show us that. Um, Nice. Um, so actually, I could do like a quick before and after. So currently, um, this is what we have. Like if we try to, you know, filter using any of these labels, we get some sort of completion, but then we actually never get the values. Um, unless you actually come here to like, you know, hold shift and then click on any of the labels before you can actually be able to do that. But then with the new update, I go to this. Um, if we, let's say for example, search for this, we can actually go in here and click through any of these. And you'll actually suggest like the available names, values that are available. Um, for this particular profile, it's just one because of the way I added Parker to my computer. But yeah, the idea is that we now have proper label value auto completion, and then he adds it in like this little tag that helps, like you know, help differentiate it. And then you can also do, um, for example, you can do this to, um, and then it helps add everything together. Um, and it also works if you try to like type it through. Um, say job default. Yeah, oops. Yeah. So the point is refresh here. Yeah, so the point is that if you do this, Basically, the idea is that if you have proper values and labels that are here, it helps you to like filter them out, and that way you don't have to necessarily, um, you know, memorize like label values that are here. But instead, the UI automatically helps also complete it for you. So yeah, and then maybe for like future iterations, we can have for instances where instead of you know doing this, you can actually. I'm sorry, I'm add this back. Um, can actually go in here and edit it as opposed to like deleting the entire thing. Um, so, so yeah, that's like the latest update that I wanted to show. Um, so yeah, um, any questions? Or... First of all, Yami, that looks awesome. Uh, thanks for the nice presentation I want I'm looking forward to actually start using that I've been using like I've been poking around uh, lately a lot in the UI so I definitely need that yep. so any questions no nothing just wanted to also say this is really amazing I think it was might have been the like first feature request we've ever gotten on a on a stream the first time we showed off parka i think um so I, I forget who it was but they immediately said would have been nice if the 
um, label values were also autocompleted. So I think I think this might have been one of the very first um, issues ever ever created. So this is that's really exciting and really awesome. Thanks. Stop sharing now. All right, uh, Frederick, do you want to take it over for the storage updates? Yes, I can do a quick update on the on the storage. So, um, basically, hey Jimmy, what's up? Um, so we we're, we're um, as as you may or may not know, we're building our own uh, kind of embedded columnar store right now. Um, based on Apache Parquet and Apache Arrow, and um, yeah, this is uh, in a in a really exciting state. So um, it's now basically it's almost as usable as the like main branch of Parka. You can kind of query, you can um, do most of the queries that we are able to do. So that's kind of where we're um, where we're where we're at right now. Um, there are a couple of missing features, and then ultimately, um, what we haven't implemented yet is that we actually have some sort of retention, right? In like the stable version of uh, Parka, you can say how much um, time in terms of retention you want, um, and Parka will periodically get rid of data uh, so that you, you know, don't your, your memory usage doesn't infinitely grow. That's currently the case still with the uh, columnar store. However, I've been running uh, the uh, Parka version with the columnar store for about half an hour. So I just want to, we, we might, we may be in luck. We may be um, are about to see uh, Parka fail miserably, but uh, let's give it a shot. I wanted to just kind of show off uh, where we're at. For what it's worth, like it was running on my machine earlier while getting a haircut for an hour. <laughs> and it was just totally fine as well. So that was good coming back. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's exciting. So um, we, we've literally built this while well, like Apache Parquet and Apache Arrow are uh, kind of fundamental building blocks. We did need to build a whole lot of infrastructure to make this work. We built uh, like a query building engine, a query optimizer, um, and all of these things uh, that like make a database a database. Um, and so it was exciting that a couple of days ago, I got a couple of the query optimizations working and all of a sudden um, this database started to become kind of usable in terms of query latency. And there's still a lot of work to do, but it's it's exciting. I believe you can see my screen and you can see the Parka server, is that right? Mm, I can see your yes. screen, but I can only see your meeting. Is that only me? Uh, maybe I shared the wrong thing. I was only seeing the Google Meet. Same here. OK. Let's try that again. How about now? Yes. You can see no Parker you are. Parker. OK, so as always, we can list the uh, the types of profiles that are available. And we can see the metrics graph. And if we hit search, it calculates. Now it actually does the calculation. Previously, we actually were saving the aggregate. Now we're actually doing the calculation every time we do the uh, metrics query, which is actually really exciting because you saw how how fast that just was. Um, that we you know are, are still able to maintain a super low uh, query latency, and we can do all of the interactions that we were able to do before. Uh, we can do a point in time, and I think the one that Kind of the reason why we did all of this um, that's incredibly exciting to me is that uh, merges are also incredibly fast. So if I hit merge, now we can see almost 90% of our uh, time in Parka is being spent in garbage collection. That's absolutely insane. Obviously, we knew, we know that there's a ton of um, things we need to optimize here, and we took a, 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 a number of shortcuts. Uh, so this is totally expected. But it's still like um, really, it's ninety five percent of the time is uh, being spent in garbage collection. So clearly, we're doing something super leaky. But it's still super exciting that all of this uh, still ha can happen this quickly, right? So yeah, this is really only the start, and it's already uh, starting to be super promising. 
um, that you, you, you may be noticing that I'm super excited about this. And that is because we've been working on this for almost three months. And just, you know, two days ago, um, it, it started to take the shape that I just showed you. So yeah, just, that's just kind of what I wanted to share um, in terms of the current progress and uh, what's, what's going to happen next. So um, a couple of uh, missing features are um, still there. So it's not possible right now to list the possible values, uh, possible label values. Um, it's possible to uh, to list the label, sorry, the label names. We cannot list the label names right now. Label values do already work, but label names is something that's that's still missing. Um, so that's that's something. Obviously, there will be a lot more performance optimizations, but um, the more critical, the two two critical things are. Um, we need to be able to kind of swap out and rotate our append state. So what I said said earlier, um, and, and as opposed to like Prometheus or how it works currently in Parka, we don't want to make uh, we don't want to make it time based anymore. But because that's really hard to predict in terms of the memory usage, we want to make it basically like any other database does. We want to make it size based so that the uh, memory usage of uh, your Parka server is very predictable. Um, I don't know why my uh, image just froze there. But um, yeah, so we're going to make that size-based. Um, and then also uh, what's really cool about using Parquet as the in-memory format is that we can also use it as the persistent format. So kind of naturally, by building, um, by using Parquet as a, as a building block, we can now just kind of flush everything from memory onto onto disk, and then um, memory map it so that we can use it um, use it from disk. So yeah, that's that's where we at with with the columnar store. Super cool. Any it questions? Looks... No questions. Uh, is this going to affect the deployment in any way? Uh, no, it's. Um, put, I mean, once we once we um, once we add persistence, it might right because right now um, all of the manifests are deployments, and obviously then it'll it, it may be depending on you know how you use Parka, it may start to be interesting for you to add a persistent volume. But you know, if you don't care about the uh, persistence, you can totally leave it at a at a deployment and just have it treated as ephemeral. But good question. And like from the from the uh, aspects of the manifest themselves, um, at most there's a flag you would need to add maybe for for a time given to enable the new experimental columnar store. But everything else, like from the outside, looks the same. Even the gRPC. <laughs> Uh, APIs are exactly identical. Like they didn't change, right? So everything will be kind of transparent to the user in the end. Yeah. I think there was another um, hand raised. Uh, yeah, uh, building a column store sounds cool. I don't really know much about it. Uh, where can I look at the code? Is it possible to know? Um, mo most of the code is um, in a in a private repo right now, and then uh, the kind of integrating code is um, in the COL two um, branch in Parka. Um, so, thanks. But, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Ah, yeah, no problem. Um, but basically, it's a it's a wrapper around uh, it's a it's a glorified wrapper around Parquet and um, Apache Arrow. But um, yeah, I, I highly recommend um, checking out um, the Parquet library that we're using for this, which is uh, uh, one that was originally created by the folks at Segment. Let me get the um, link for that, because this library, I have to say, is. I, I already put everything in the, in the document. You want to maybe drop it into the chat here as well. This uh, this library is just absolutely incredible. The developers have put an incredible amount of 
um, thought into the APIs, um, I highly recommend checking it out, even if you're not going to work with Parquet, although you should. It's an awesome format. All right, awesome. Thanks, everyone. OK. Uh, well, if anyone doesn't have any uh, anything else to ask, uh, I think I'm going to go next and talk about symbolizing dynamic libraries. First of all, I'm sorry that I am not very well prepared. I don't have any slides or I don't have any cool demos like the other guys. Sorry about that. Uh, even though all the work is kind of ready to be released. Uh, but yeah, it's not in a demoable stage. Maybe next uh, office hours, I'm going to show uh, some cool demos uh, with the different languages. So let's talk about symbolizing dynamic libraries. Uh, for that, we need to talk about a concept called position independent code. If you are not familiar with that, it's basically having binaries uh, without absolute address. Uh, so with all the relative address, you can, like the operating systems, uh, can load those binaries uh, basically in a flexible manner. This uh, methodology actually used a lot with the shared libraries, but uh, there are some runtimes or compilers uh, by default actually also produces position independent binaries like Rust. So for this, uh, whenever uh, we encounter from the agent side uh, a process, we need to actually check out where this uh, process in the memory actually loaded. And from that, we need to adjust all the address that we receive so that we can actually uh, symbolize them in the server side, right? And this also comes uh, with like some additional features, like uh, since if you have some shared libraries dynamically linked to your binaries, uh, that means we can also uh, provide uh, debug information uh, from another source for you. So you don't need to actually peg every all the debug information to to your binary or to run your runtime. Like for example, glibc or libc is kind of the uh, one of the most common shared objects. Uh, and if you just have a binary that linked against uh, libc, we can actually uh, check out some public registries and find the debug information for you and all the human readable stack traces will be available for you. There, there are a couple of other works regarding this in the server side and the uh, Parker agent side. Uh, which we have been working on for the past couple of uh, weeks. And they are about to land. I guess we are planning to release maybe today or tomorrow. We'll see. We just need to merge another PR and we need to maybe sacrifice some goals or anything to GitHub Actions because they keep going down. So let's see if they let us, we are going to release. So uh, again, I know this is just like talk, uh, but in the next meeting, I will be showing some examples. But if you have any questions, uh, just like go for it. Super exciting stuff. I actually have a question since I am basically just a user of this. Um, when when we are going to be able to find the debug information on like a public uh, server repository or whatever it's called? Um, Will it have the exact same build ID than kind of like uploading these files from, from Parker Agent? And if if that's the case, then we can skip uploading them because uh, we exactly. already found them. Exactly, that is the case. Uh, so, and that's what we are also implementing. Uh, one thing, like if the public debug info, these servers, they have actually quality uh, debug information that they just like provide. Uh, but some of the, even though package managers uh, kind of pack everything uh, like in their systems, they are not publicly available through this debugging for these servers. So one thing that we try to do, let me give an example. So you have a package, say that Postgres SQL, right? And then uh, you have a, you install the package. Usually uh, for different distros or different package managers also have the, dash debug or the dash debug info versions of the same package and those comes with the, all the debug information installed in the system right 
and then we can park agent actually can discover those files and upload them that's one way but there is also debugging for the public servers where as you described with a build id from the binary that uh, we read we can just like go to that public server and download that but i don't i'm not an expert in the debugging for the implementation of the uh, like linux distros out there but like most of the times you just won't find those debug information. So what we plan to do actually uh, as Polar Signals, we want to implement the debug info D server soon enough, which will include like, we will have a broad support for build IDs for the most common packages. Nice, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, are build IDs like you, you give in the Postgres uh, example, if I pull or install um, Postgres from one distro, is the build ID going to be different on all the other distros or is there like some compatibility or like some similar build ID they sh all share for the same version, etc.? In theory, the like builds should be like reproducible, uh, but like the build pip pipelines differ and the flags are differ. So yeah, exactly. that's why like they probably will be consistent within the distro or mm -hmm. the package manager. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, fair enough. And I think that's still <laughs> reasonable. It would be a perfect world where it would be the same build ID, but we all know how reproducible builds are and what the state even in Debian is, right? So. I think I think it's important to really internalize what, like, take take the word actually literally. It's it's an ID of that build when it was built. <laughs> this is not even about reproducibility or anything like that. It's it's literally to say this binary was built, and here's a unique identifier for it, and here the, this is how you can um, access and find it on the internet. Um, so that's that's kind of how it made click for me. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. Even even then, if we can cache them, if we can like somehow save the work to redo this every single time, that's already a huge improvement. Love it. So, yes, that is the state of the things uh, about that. Like just like stay tuned for the next releases. So it it will have all these nice features. That's like actually like maybe one should I one thing I also additionally mention uh, like all the runtimes or the VMs they also consist of like binaries right and the shared object so this work actually will support lots of like runtimes as well say Node.js runtime so th this will also help to uh, like provide human readable uh, stack information for those runtimes as well and JVM yes. You were saying something, Frederick. I, I, I like. I just wanted to comment that this is absolutely insanely incredible work. Like this has been in the making for five months, right? Like it's really, really incredible um, what you put together here, um, and it's really important work. Um, and yeah, also just for me personally, I've I've seen how you kind of went through this journey and i just have to say it's really incredible how you kind of cut through all of this you know 30 40 years of um of i don't know if, if i can call it tech debt but like you know just <laughs> uh layers and layers of uh systems built on top of each other and i think it's just incredible how you managed to master it all Thanks. Yeah, that's been a journey. Uh, I learned a lot. And as you said, like it, it was kind of an archaeological work, but it was fun. And uh, we already like posted a one black blog, uh, like a series of blog posts about it. But like we already planned a couple of uh, other blog posts so that we can share what we learned. So also stay tuned for that. By we in this context, I'm talking about the Polar Signals team. Like we don't have a block a space for Parker yet. We totally should though. Yeah. Any other questions?
Okay. And we can open the board for like anything you want to mention or if you want to say hi, just go for it. No, no one. All right, then. So thank you, everyone, for attending another session of the Park Office Hours. I hope we will see each other in the next Office Hours. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.